Hi guys, how's it going? My name's Helena, welcome back to the channel. Over the past few months, I've had the absolute pleasure of reviewing one of QHY's newer models, the QHY 260M monochrome camera. And in this video, I'm gonna give you my honest opinion on the model, which includes whether I think you should buy it, and whether it is the right camera for you. One of the main reasons I love this camera so much is the APS-C size sensor that we have inside. Now, all the other astrophotography cameras I have used have had a micro four thirds sensor inside. This one, however, has an APS-C size sensor and it's the exact same sensor that you'd find in any crop sensor DSLRs that you might have used in the past. The specific sensor that the 268 uses is the IMX571 and it does not disappoint. Along with the APS-C size sensor, another characteristic that makes this camera exceptionally, exceptionally good at capturing light is its 16-bit depth readout. A higher bit depth basically equals a smoother image as it refers to how much data your camera is capturing in each color channel. A 16-bit camera holds 65,500 shades of grey and a 12-bit camera to compare holds 4,096. Now when you're using a 12-bit camera you probably won't notice this but when you upgrade to a 16, the buttery smooth transition of the colours is absolutely insane and is very apparent in the images taken. Obviously with any camera, the higher the integration time, the better your image is going to look. But I found with this, even with short 2 minute 60 second exposures even, the images were looking absolutely phenomenal. And with this monochrome camera having to shoot through each individual filter to make a colour photo, I thought it was going to take so much longer to make images, seeing as my weather is totally pants half the time in Scotland. But this is totally not the case with the 16-bit readout in the APS-C size sensor, as the photons are coming in so quickly and image quality is so high even at one hour. So even if you get one hour per channel, you're winning. On QHY's website, it claims that this camera has zero amp glow when taking dark frames. I can vouch for that, <laughs> I can vouch for that. There is absolutely no amp glow peeping through the side of the sensor at all. The dark frames produced with this camera were beyond the cleanest I've ever seen. There were only a few pixels scattered across the frame. I'll put up a picture of one here now. And as you can see, it just looks awesome. And this gave me such high expectations, and rightly so, for what this camera was going to produce in the future. Now, one thing I would be aware of when taking dark frames is the high sensitivity of this sensor. Now, that is brilliant when we're outside taking photos of deep space objects. We want that high sensitivity to get that detail in the deep sky objects. But when we're taking dark frames, I found it really, really difficult for there not to be any light leaking in the sides of the photographs. So what I mean is you need to be taking them in a pitch black room. I even put a blanket over the telescope to avoid any light leaking into gaps in adapters, for instance, and that did the trick. Now, a lot of you will be used to just taking your camera off your telescope and putting the cap on it for dark frames. And I would do that in this instance as well. I wouldn't, that's normally what I would go to do but it's easier for me with this system for me to keep it on the telescope and here's why. So QHY use this exceptionally secure bolting system with their backspacing adapters up to the field flattener and there is an array of adapters that are connected through screws that are bolted directly onto the filter wheel. Now this is absolutely ideal because it avoids all movement issues but the filter wheel is also bolted to the camera, so it means that I'd have to unscrew everything in order to take the camera off and put the cap back on to shoot dark frames. So all in all, it's easier to just leave it on and chuck a blanket over it and call it a day. I do think this bolting system has more pros and cons, but I know a lot of you out there will be used to, even out of habit, of taking the camera off the telescope, so I just wanted to leave that in there for you guys. For all of my photos so far, I've used high gain mode, a gain of 56 and an offset of 25. Now that is just what's worked for me and I'll be honest, I asked others what they used. I didn't really play around with it that much, but I really would recommend playing around with it and see what works well for you. Now, so far we have talked about a lot of the positives of this camera and you can probably tell that I really, really do love it. But this is a review, obviously, and I need to let you know what I didn't like so much so that you're aware of it before purchasing. So the main, main struggle, and this is the biggest issue I had with the camera, everything else was absolutely fine afterwards, 
but this was driver installation. Now I feel like with QHY it's very hit or miss with driver installation. Some find it very easy and some have a lot of trouble. And my problem was that Nina was not registering the filter wheel at all. It was registering the camera fine, it was the filter wheel driver that was not registering in Nina. And I tried so many things and I was just at a bit of a loss really, I really didn't know what to do until someone really kindly messaged me on Instagram and found a solution for me and it's never in a million years what I would have thought of doing but I think it's really important that you guys know about it. This filter wheel is the third model, it's the QHY CFW3 I think and I had the QHY CFW3 filter wheel drivers installed on my computer as you'd expect because it's the newest model but clearly there were some bugs in the driver that weren't entirely fixed yet. To solve the problem, I had to uninstall the third generation software and install the second generation software. So the QHY CFW2. And Nina recognized that absolutely fine. So it seems to use the same sort of setup in each driver, but I think the second one has just gone through a lot more bug tests and fixes, and it's just a much more secure option. So if you guys have any trouble with that at all, try the second driver, it worked well for me. As for taking photos and the field of view I was working with, the APS-C sensor and the 840 millimeter focal length on the Esprit 120 which I should actually mention was the main scope that I was using to take photos with the camera, make up such a nice field of view and the imaging frame did so many nebulous regions justice. I mean, it was really a beautiful image that this setup was capturing. So the main question, should you buy the QHY 260M? Obviously, each person's setup is suited to each person's needs in the hobby, but I firmly believe that this camera is one of the best going on the market currently for astrophotography. That is down to my complete personal opinion though. It definitely depends what you want out of the hobby. If you're wanting a run and gun setup that's gonna quickly get you color images, the QHY 260M isn't really for you, but I would definitely suggest it for home setups that you're gonna have running for a long period of time. And with that 16-bit depth readout, you can produce some really nice high quality images in a short period of time. However, the downside is the driver issues. I can't predict whether you will get them or not when you purchase the camera, which is very unfortunate. And I do think QHY should be looking at the drivers in a little bit more detail to overcome them. But overall, once you get past these issues, the camera is absolutely fantastic and I cannot fault it whatsoever. I do believe this camera is the best astrophotography camera going for amateur astrophotographers in 2021. Thank you guys so, so much for tuning in to another video. I'm so sorry it's been so long since my last upload. School has been absolutely manic recently, but I'm trying to upload when I can and I'm really, really enjoying it when I do. Hopefully I'm gonna get back under the stars again at some point soon. The weather has been absolutely awful recently for my Christmas break but hopefully we'll get an imaging session in sooner or later. I hope you're all staying well where you are and you've had a lovely Christmas. Happy New Year when it comes. I'll see you all in the next one, but until then, happy stargazing, stay safe and clear skies.